um, I would like to put out a public service announcement and um, find out what Turtles ever did to Nick Cutter because this is the second book where he has a vengeance against turtles So I just need to know like what did they do to you man? What did they do? Why do we hate them so much? It's your girl Jay and today I am here with my April wrap-up for 2024. I read a total of 13 books so I will be splitting this up into two parts. So this is part number one where I will talk about the first six books that I read for this month. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I have is Their Vicious Games by Joelle Wellington and I gave this a four out of five stars. This follows a girl named Adina Walker who is a black teen. She has just lost her scholarship to an Ivy League school when she had an incident with a white student at her high school. She decides to take matters into her own hands and try to get an invitation to a competition called The Finish, which is hosted by a very wealthy family called the Remingtons. I actually listened to this one on audiobook and it was so entertaining. It definitely does not feel like a debut novel. I was instantly hooked right from the very first chapter. I was so invested in Adina's future and story. I read this in one sitting because I just needed to know what was going to happen next. I thought that the competition was so intriguing. The concept of 12 girls competing in order to become a Remington was such an interesting way to talk about things like classism, performative allyship, and racism. I I really liked Adina. She is not exactly a likable character, but she definitely wins your heart over in the end. The friendship between Adina and Saint was so well done. I just want more of them. Like, if there was a spin-off series with just these two, I would read it. I would eat that shit up. I really enjoyed this. Four out of five stars. Next up, I have The Handyman Method. This is by Nick Cutter and Andrew F. Sullivan. I was not a fan of this. I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. This follows a man, his wife, and young son moving into their new house in a new subdivision. Upon moving in, they quickly realize that the house has a lot of problems that need to be fixed. Trent, the husband, decides that he is going to fix the issues, but they end up consuming him after he finds a YouTube channel called Handyman Hank. Like I said, I was not a fan of this. I absolutely despise Trent, which I think was the point, but like even when he was first introduced, he just gave me the ick. Like I hated this man with a passion. I also think that it was very slow paced. I was bored through the majority of the story. I was going to give it a one star, but the ending really saved it for me. I did enjoy that aspect of the story, so we did bump it up one star, but definitely not my cup of tea. Also, if animal torture and death is not your thing, I would definitely avoid this book. It was a lot. Um, I would like to put out a public service announcement and um, find out what Turtles ever did to Nick Cutter because this is the second book where he has a vengeance against turtles. So I just need to know, like, what did they do to you, man? What do they do? Why do we hate them so much? Next up, I read The Encanto's Daughter by Melissa Dela Cruz, and I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows MJ Rodriguez, who is half Encanto. She has been hiding out in the human world, but then her father, the king, ends up dying, so she has to return to his land in order to become the rightful heir. When she arrives, she learns that his death may not have been as natural as she was told, so she really wants to figure out what happened and who was behind his death. This is a story based on Filipino mythology, which I really loved that aspect of the story, but I do think that the characters were a bit younger than the 17, 18 year old range they were supposed to be. MJ grew a lot during the story. I really liked watching her have to learn about her kingdom and the dynamics within it. I do think that the relationship between MJ and Lucas was very cute, but it did feel a little bit rushed at times. I really loved MJ's friend Nyx. I think that they were a great addition to the story. It was a very quick read. I finished it in a couple of hours, but I do think a lot of the things that happened were very convenient and just things were wrapped up way too easily for MJ. I will probably pick up the second book if it falls into my lap, but I'm not going to go out of my way to find it. But I did like this. It was a 3.5 out of 5 stars for me. 
Next up, I read Secrets Never Die by Vincent Ralph, and I gave this a three out of five stars. So every Halloween, Sam and his group of friends meet up in the woods, and they go to an abandoned hut, which they call the Dark Place, where they whisper their sins. This year, they are interrupted when somebody starts throwing eggshells filled with blood at their meeting spot. The next day, each of them receive a text message from someone named Sasha Craven, who claims to know their secrets and sins and starts blackmailing them. I found this to be a very average thriller. I can usually get through thrillers very quickly, but this one took me some time because it seemed to drag quite a bit. I did think that it was fast-paced, but I didn't find the twists or turns to be all that compelling, so I didn't really care about it. I also found it hard to keep track of who was who at times. There are quite a few characters, but all of them are pretty unremarkable in my opinion. I wish that we had gotten more point of views other than just Sam's because I think that would have helped kind of dive into the other characters' lives a bit more. I wasn't able to guess who the culprit was, which I did enjoy, but like I said, a little bit lackluster and anticlimactic, so three out of five stars. Next up are two books from the same series. The first is The Merciful Crow and the second is The Faithless Hawk. These are both by Margaret Owen. The first one I gave a 3.5 out of five stars and the second one I gave a four out of five stars. This duology follows Fi. She is a crow, which is the lowest caste tasked with removing the bodies of those affected by the plague. She is in line to become the next chief of her clan. After her band of crow answers a plague beacon at the palace, they realize that the body is that of Prince Jasimir and his bodyguard Tavin. After the removal, it is revealed that Prince Jasimir and Tavin faked their deaths in order to get away from Queen Rushana, who has been trying to kill Jasimir for quite some time to solidify her place on the throne. They ask the crows for help to get to their allies in exchange for the hawk's protection protection once they overthrow the queen. The magic system in this, I think, was the best part of the story. There are 11 casts that are all named after birds, and each cast has a special ability that is their birthright. I just found it so interesting to learn about the 11 casts and what their special abilities were and how that played into the story overall. I really loved Fi as a main character. She really cared about her tribe and would do anything in order to protect them. She was just such a complex and interesting character to me, and I loved learning more about her as the story progressed. Tavin absolutely broke my heart, especially when he was battling between what he wanted to do with his life and what he was born to do. I also really liked watching Jasimir learn more about his kingdom and everything that he's been sheltered from, especially the unfairness within it. One of my favorite parts of this book is Barf the Cat. He provides so much comic relief that was definitely much needed for the heavier topics in this. I didn't care too much about the romance, I think that it could have been left out and we would have still kind of gotten the same story, but it did end up growing on me in the end, so at times I do think that the writing became very repetitive and it dragged a little bit in the second half of the book, but I did like it enough to go straight into the second book, which is The Faithless Hawk. Like I said, this one I gave a four out of five stars. This was a very satisfying conclusion to the duology, but I definitely think that you need to read the first book and then go straight into the second book to really understand what is going on. The world and the magic system is explained so much more in this, so if you had any unanswered questions from the first book, they are answered in this one. I definitely liked this second installment more more than the first. I think that Fi grew so much as a leader. I loved the banter between Fi and Jasimir. I think that they are so funny and I just loved their friendship together. I think that both of them grew so much from the first book and I definitely like Jasimir a lot more in this book than I did in the first book because he was a little bit whiny. There was a giant twist in this that I did not see coming at all, but I love how it played out in the end. Also, big fan of Queen Roshana and her white tiger. I know, like, I technically shouldn't be rooting for the villain, but I love me a good villain. She was so much fun. I really want a spinoff of this series. Like, I'm going to miss these characters so much. So, Margaret Owen, I mean just write, write something else with these characters because I don't want it to be over. All right, everybody. So those were the first six books that I read for the month of April 2024. Part two will be up whenever I film and edit it. So check that out on my channel when it's uploaded. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them. And I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye. <laughs>